Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we're delving into The Inner Game of Tennis by W. Timothy Galway. Combining lessons from sports and life, this groundbreaking book explores the battle between our conscious and unconscious minds, particularly as it relates to performance. Authored by a former tennis player turned tennis instructor, Galway illustrates the power of mental training and how it can vastly improve performance, transcending the realm of sports into various aspects of our daily lives. This insightful exploration will equip you with practical strategies to harness your innate abilities and excel not only on the tennis court, but in life too. This book is a must-read for athletes wanting to elevate their game, entrepreneurs in search of a performance upgrade, or anyone wishing to lead a more fulfilling life. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into these key concepts in the next 20 minutes. Enjoy the journey! The Inner Game of Tennis, The Ultimate Guide to the Mental Side of Peak Performance. Introduction, Unlock Your Potential by Mastering Your Mind. What do you believe is the secret to emerging victorious, whether it's an intense tennis match or a high-stakes negotiation? You're probably thinking determination, strategic planning, and professional guidance. Imagine if someone suggested you ignore all that and just listen to your gut. Sounds absurd, right? But that's the surprising insight you'll discover through our journey together. Trusting your intuition and embracing the organic flow of events can indeed prime your mind for achievement. Your true opponent isn't the rival across the net, but your own inner demons, self-doubt, anxiety, and distracting mental chatter. Vanquishing these foes means winning the inner game. Once you've achieved this inner victory, you can reach peak performance in the outer game, pushing yourself to accomplish your objectives. Join me as we explore the mind of a champion and its striking resemblance to a predator, the secret to learning as effortlessly and rapidly as a child, and why sometimes tuning out your coach may be the best move. Part 1. The Secret Dual Identity of Tennis Players and the Role of Coaches Imagine witnessing a fierce tennis match between top-ranked players, but what you may not realize is that beneath the visible duels on the court, there lies a hidden battle raging within the players themselves. This clandestine skirmish is between a player's conscious mind, or what we'll call self-one, and their unconscious mind, or self-two. Players grapple intensely with inner demons like self-doubt, performance anxiety, and the struggle to stay optimistic. Moreover, self one often adopts the role of a stern judge, offering criticism and directives to the self-effacing self. Two, if you've seen a tennis player berate themselves with phrases like, get it together, mid-match, that's self one scolding, self two. The dynamics of these internal interactions significantly influence a player's external performance. Tennis coaches are vital in helping players strike a harmonious balance between their selves. Traditionally, coaches advise players on dos and don'ts. However, this approach can sometimes backfire. Focusing too much on conscious instructions tends to detract from performance rather than enhance it. It's like self, one overstepping its bounds and trying to micromanage self, too, often with less than stellar results. For instance, when self, one tells you, Stop feeling so jittery. Does that really alleviate your nerves? Most likely, it only intensifies the anxiety. Therefore, coaches need to help players foster a healthier relationship between the two selves, where neither one is seeking control over the other. Mastery over this inner interaction can lead to an out-of-mind performance in the outer game, where each stroke feels instinctive and seamless. So, how can we nurture this harmonious interplay between the two selves? Whether you're a coach or player, we'll reveal how to facilitate this productive dialogue, ensuring maximum potential on the court. Stay tuned. Part 2. Unlock your best performance by silencing the conscious mind and releasing judgments. Picture this. 
You're in the midst of an intense tournament, sweating it out in a crucial match. Despite your best efforts and perfect strokes, your opponent seems unflappable. What's your next move? Most likely you'd try to consciously refine your technique, maybe by adjusting your racket grip. However, that approach isn't your path to victory. The secret to excelling is to tranquilize your conscious mind and dissolve judgments. While the conscious self tends to overanalyze and critique, seasoned players know that top-notch performance unfolds only when thoughts recede and pure action dominates. Instead of over-relying on your conscious mind, let self too take over. As you immerse yourself completely in the game, you'll become akin to a predator, hunting its prey, guided by instinct, poised for success. After all, the hallmarks of peak performance, timing, rhythm, fluidity, are the forte of self too. But to harness this potential, quieting your conscious mind is imperative. Accomplishing this is a multi-layered task, and the first step involves releasing all judgments. Judgments are cognitive processes that feed the egoistic self one rather than restraining it. Furthermore, negative judgments, like perceiving oneself as awkward, can lead to tangible, negative outcomes, such as feeling self-conscious and clumsy on the court. A more effective strategy is to mentally replay your moves on the court as if you're watching a recorded match. This allows you to concentrate on the ball's trajectory and your racket movements, letting yourself too experiment with various swings. In this way, your unconscious mind hones its skills without any coach or self one passing judgment on its rightness or wrongness. However, merely curbing the critical nature of self one isn't sufficient for liberating self two. In the following sections, discover how to further empower the unconscious mind. Part three, empower your unconscious mind by trusting its innate capabilities. Ask any seasoned leader and they'll tell you, micromanaging is a road to ruin. The most effective strategy is to define the goal, motivate your team, offer necessary support, and trust them to perform well. This wisdom isn't just limited to teams. It applies equally to the relationship between self one and self two. Just think about it. Your body, associated with self two, operates seamlessly without needing conscious control. Essentially, you don't need to micromanage every tiny bodily function. Take reading this summary as an example. While your attention is fully invested in deciphering these words, your body, part of self too, accomplishes a multitude of tasks. It manages your breathing, ensures you stay upright, and simultaneously digests your most recent meal. Hence, it's evident that self too is highly competent. It's proficient not just at basic functions, but also more complicated tasks like bicycling, singing, or executing a perfect tennis serve. Therefore, self too doesn't require directives from the conscious mind. It can excel independently, given we respect and place trust in it. The trick lies in allowing things to happen naturally rather than forcing them. Indeed, not only is it unnecessary for self one to intervene with instructions, it can actually be detrimental. The sheer pressure of desiring an outcome can often inhibit it from manifesting or occurring optimally. Consider a situation where your tennis serve lacks force. In an attempt to rectify this, you consciously tense your serving arm muscles while swinging your racket. But this intentional focus will likely cause you to overflex your muscles, leaving them too stiff to execute a good serve. Part 4. Cultivate concentration by practicing mindful presence. What's preoccupying your thoughts at this very moment? Is it this summary you're reading or the strategies you'll adopt in your future games? Often, our minds stray to future possibilities. However, it's important not to resist this tendency, but to gently redirect it. This is particularly crucial because your self one is innately restless. It'll persistently intrude until you assign it a task. Thus, to keep it in check, guide its focus to the present. Ignore the could-bes and the has-beens. In tennis, the objective should be to concentrate on the ball's current position 
rather than its prospective location or your impending response. Simply observe the ball and zoom in on its movements. This will prevent your mind from wandering astray. Training your mind to focus is indeed a simple exercise, but not by compelling it to intensely fixate on something. A more conducive approach is to ease into it and guide your curiosity towards the object of your concentration. During a tennis match, this can be achieved by carefully observing when the ball bounces and when it strikes the racket. Voicing these actions out loud as they occur prevents your mind from overloading with stress or concerns. However, such relaxed concentration is only attainable when you embody self-assurance, refrain from judgment, and trust in yourself. So, always remember that honed concentration can enhance your game, but it requires dedicated practice to master. To successfully concentrate on the present, practice body awareness, like noticing the sensation of your racket in your hand. And to do this, you need to release any thoughts concerning your next move. This approach ushers in a novel method of learning, which will be further explored in the upcoming sections. Part 5. Optimal learning arises from hands-on experience and personal adaptation. Babies intuitively acquire new abilities and effortlessly master different languages. But as they grow older, this innate learning capacity seems to get obstructed. We start classifying actions as right or wrong, fostering a fear of making mistakes. However, there's no absolute correct or incorrect way to do something. It's about finding the method that aligns best with each individual. Consider the author's observation of a younger generation of tennis players. He noticed they were serving in a way he deemed as incorrect. But this technique was functioning efficiently for them. This example illustrates that the route to excellence isn't carved by what others can teach you. Rather, it's about discovering what works best for you, embracing natural learning. Imagine your tennis coach advises you to maintain a rigid wrist while executing a backhand. If you follow this directive rigorously, your wrist might end up excessively stiff. Therefore, instead of sticking strictly to such rules, strive to develop a playing style that fits you perfectly. But how do you do that? Avoid overthinking your experiences. This fundamental step mirrors the learning prowess of children who easily learn by merely observing and experimenting. They have no fear or doubt. To learn as effectively as they do, you just need to trust yourself too, without any interference from your conscious mind. Take dancing, for example. You could enroll in dance classes offering meticulous step by step instructions, but this approach would just trigger your conscious mind. Alternatively, you could spend a night out, observe other dancers, and then emulate their moves, trusting that your unconscious mind has got your back. Psychologists refer to this potent method as implicit learning, and it's a vital element in achieving peak performance. Part 6. Extend the principles of the inner game beyond the tennis court and into your life. The inner game principles undoubtedly enhance your tennis game. But how can you transpose this knowledge to your general life? Let's first explore how the inner game can revolutionize sports in general. By releasing the compulsion to regulate everything, games can become more enjoyable and athletes can center their attention on the present moment. Often, people engage in sports to fulfill their egotistic desires, and since achievements hold significant value in our society, Even the most basic games can become a platform to validate and demonstrate one's worth. Understandably, such pressure can breed fear, anxiety, and frustration. But when you adopt the inner game, you can abandon judgment, align with your unconscious, and truly relish what you're engaged in. This doesn't imply that competition is unfavorable. It's entirely acceptable to strive for victory and remain determined. Nevertheless, the kind of competition that truly benefits you is more about giving your best, overcoming obstacles, and immersing yourself in the sport rather than outperforming others or hoping they stumble. Consider competitive surfers, for instance. If their primary goal was merely the joy of the sport, they would attempt every wave, but they selectively tackle the most challenging ones, helping them to hone their skills. Remember, Sports are not battlegrounds, 
instead of combating the opposing team, your focus should be on clearing your own hurdles. The principles of the inner game can recalibrate your sports mindset, but the potential applications aren't confined to this domain. The truth is, this wisdom is universally applicable. Most endeavors involve an inner and an outer game, and to excel, you must cultivate the former. After all, your conscious self triggers stress, often through judgments. Consequently, the inner game is about reducing your reliance on the validation and guidance of others and empowering your unconscious self to lead you. Picture being in a business negotiation. You'll command a much stronger bargaining position if you remain grounded in the moment. Simply trust your abilities in the present and accept what's beyond your control. Final summary. The central idea of this book The conscious mind often clashes with the unconscious, whether on the tennis court or in daily life. By elevating the unconscious and harmonizing both, you can unlock your true potential and perform exceptionally in all areas, from sports fields to professional environments. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.